Today's Taco Tuesday tech tip, let's talk about spark plugs. We've got a 2004 WRX here and we're doing some plugs before it runs on the dyno. And plugs on Subarus are a pain in the butt. So I've already moved the washer reservoir. I've pulled the coil packs out. You can see they're just kind of hanging out right there. But now we have to get to the plugs themselves, which are in the absolute worst spot ever. So the spark plugs are on the side of the motor here, up against this frame rail, and there's not a lot of space. So here I've got just your traditional 5 8 spark plug socket, and you can see that even on an extension, first you're not going to really be able to get it down in there very well. So then you get to the good old wobbly style. Now this is a 5 8 socket with a wobbly. Now on an extension, let's see how well that goes in. So short extension, let's see if we can even get that in there. Man, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, so you can see this, the head of the, the ratchet basically hits, so I need an even shorter extension. So we're getting into some crazy weird custom extensions to try to get this in there. But the nice thing is there is a tool that's gonna make this easy. So here it is, and mine is very well worn. This is a double swivel 5 8 spark plug socket. It's got the rubber boot on the inside, this one's made by Cornwell Tools. Um, I'm sure most of the tool manufacturers have this particular socket. Um, it's pretty much mandatory if you work on dual overhead cam Subaru engines. Now this one unfortunately doesn't work on single cam ones because the middle knuckle is too big to go in the spark plug hole. But basically the way that I use this guy is I just go right down into the hole, right onto the plug. So it's now on the plug and you can see it just barely sticks out there. So even one handed here, I can grab my ratchet, put it in there, maybe. Now, essentially, I'm gonna have to set the camera down, but this is gonna come right out. So it already came loose, so now I just take the, pull the ratchet off, drop my socket. Don't worry, the plug's not in there. My socket back down in and just with my hand I'm able to have the plug out in basically a minute versus using other tools it taking 5, 10, 15 minutes per plug. With this tool set of Subaru spark plugs um, on a car where you can get to them. Now there are other challenges like uh, the intake can be in the way, the battery can be in the way. This, this WRX, once you move the, the washer bottle, it's pretty easy, but long-winded plugs. There you go, there's your spark plug. Easy peasy. Having the right tool makes the job simple. Let's have a quick little read on this spark plug. So what we're looking at on the back of the plug here, we're looking at where there's a discoloration. So you can see there's a band pretty low on the plug. So this is the timing mark right there. That's a pretty, so what we're trying to see is if the timing mark is too low, then you're going to end up with detonation. If the timing mark's too high, you're going to lose power. So our timing mark's really low on this. Um, I'd say that this this plug is probably too too hot for this particular car application and boost level. Let's take a look. What is this one? Yeah, so this is a five. This is a temperature range five. Um, this car should have it's a it's a WRX turbo car. It's no hotter than a six. Um, so this being a temp range 5 plug, that's why that stripe is so far down the plug. If that gets all the way to the thread, you're just going to have debt city. Um, yeah, that's definitely too hot of a plug. Now NGK plugs, um, the lower the number, the hotter the plug. So as you go up in numbers, the plug gets colder. Um, so we're going to put sixes in this car, I believe, and that should move that heat range should be about the middle of the strap not right down on the base like that. The old plugs are out. I always like to number the plugs so that when you inspect them, you know which cylinder was which. The interesting thing is the two and four have that distinct timing mark. 
Um, the one, the timing mark is a little bit higher, meaning that it's closer to its temp range. And three, you can't really read. So then that just shows you, you know, this the cylinder head on cylinder two and four on these Subarus. Definitely, there's more heat in that cylinder head, and so the plug is going to have a little bit of a harder time if the plug is too hot, trying to get that heat out of the out of the combustion chamber. So you're definitely being able to run on the colder side of things is is ideal. Um, so we're going to put these new plugs in. These are attempt six instead of attempt five. I'm going to go ahead and check the gap with some feeler gauges here. Um, and get them get them gapped to this is a stock turbo car it's not a big power car so we're not going to go aggressive on the gap i'm probably just going to run the factory gap on these plugs and just make sure that they're the same so i went ahead and checked these guys they're at a 30. Um, they're all pretty much the same one was just a hair looser so i just had to I actually have a nice spark plug gapping tool um, but I just tapped it down just a little bit. A lot of people say not to gap iridium plugs because it's really easy to damage the little tiny electrode in there. Um, and that's very true, but they can be gapped. Um, talking to NGK directly, and their engineers directly, um, they said, why wouldn't you gap them, was his exact response. Um, so you can gap them, you just have to be very careful. So those are all at 30 thousandths. The ones that came out were closer to 34. Um, which isn't a huge gap and they do look like they were you can see that that is kind of bent over So it does look like it was gapped down I think these plugs come out of the box at like 44 because they're designed for the NA Subarus at temp 5 So we're gonna put these back in have this car ready to go My last little recommendation or non recommendation um, a lot of people like to put NICs on spark plugs um, It does help but these are not a taper seat. These have the crush washer at the base on the crush washer plugs, I don't really think that the NICs is necessary. I've never had one of these get stuck in the head. Um, we've ran these at over a thousand horsepower um, and not had them get stuck in the head. Um, the NICs actually insulates, or does it, sorry, it doesn't insulate the plug. It actually makes the plug more thermally efficient at pulling heat out of the cylinder. So it almost gives you an additional heat range. So what was a six basically becomes a seven at that point, a much colder plug. Um, so only run anti-seize, like if you actually were to anti-seize these plugs, it would make them closer to that temperature range as far as the amount of heat that they can pull out of the combustion chamber. Little fun, fun fact. Again, okay, super easy having the right tool for the job. Plug goes right in and it's already started in there and I just spin it till it's tight with my hand, and then I grab the ratchet and tighten it down the rest of the way. And for the final step, to know if you did everything right. Basically start it up, listen for a misfire. Sounds good, it's a cold start, I haven't started it yet. So uh, if you start up a car after you do spark plugs and it immediately runs funny, you probably broke a plug or didn't plug a coil pack in or something. I couldn't tell you how many times We've had people call up and be like, man, my car's running funny, what's going on? And then they, they tow it in and it's a broken spark plug. And they're like, oh, I just did plugs. I guess that makes sense. So uh, anytime you change something on your car, if it starts running weird, you should probably look at what you just changed. So that's all I have for you guys today. Happy tuning, have a good day. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.